Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. In today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you the most interesting points that we covered over at the Anatomical Dissection Workshop in Sydney earlier this year. In case you didn't know what that is, it's an event that is open to all cosmetic practitioners that may wish to improve their anatomy of the face by using cadavers or even learn the latest and greatest in cosmetic trends through a series of fantastic lectures. Now the course takes place over one day and it costs around $1,500, but is it worth it? Well, stay tuned and we'll find out together. Good morning, it is Dr. Nora here and I'm on my way to the anatomical dissection workshop over here in Sydney. We're going to be having a full-on session of theoretical knowledge followed by some live dissections and some demonstrations on how fillers are performed. So thing about being driven to the location is that you get to be a tourist, you get to see all the different sites. We've just driven past the Sydney Opera House and we've gone over the Sydney Harbour Bridge which was quite spectacular. Now the best thing about coming to these sort of conferences is that it keeps you up to date with all of the latest and greatest in advancements in cosmetic medicine, going from how to deal with complications because things are constantly changing. So by making sure that I'm on top of things, I know exactly how to treat you guys out there and keep you nice and safe. The anatomical dissection allowed us to get up close and personal with real life cadavers. It gave us an opportunity to have a look at the face in different layers, for example going from the skin, then underneath the skin, the fat, the muscle and also the tendons and even the vessels including the nerves, the arteries and the veins. It gave us an opportunity to have a look and see where we'll be injecting filler and making sure that it's safe so that when we go to our real life patients we're injecting safely. It also gave us the opportunity to have a look at the use of hyaluronidase. But what is that? Well, hyaluronidase is used to dissolve hyaluronic acid fillers, that is your non-permanent fillers. Now, this could be used in a number of scenarios. For example, if you don't like the look of your filler, for example, you've got a botched lip job, or in an emergency situation whereby the filler has been inadvertently injected into an artery which causes a blockage to the artery supply into that skin. Now this can lead on to things like skin death or skin necrosis which of course is an emergency situation and we want to reverse that as quickly as possible. It's important to know that with hyaluronidase you don't have to inject it into the artery that you think has got the blockage. Instead you can flush the area surrounding that artery that has a blockage because it can travel through vessels. Another important fact to know is that once you use hyaluronidase, not only will it get rid of the filler hyaluronic acid that you've been using, but it will also get rid of the patient's natural hyaluronic acid. So that means over a period of about two weeks, they'll look quite sunken and they'll look quite depleted. So you may want to restore this later on. And of course, hopefully you'll never have to use hyaluronidase, but it's really interesting to see it work in action and to see how the filler dissolves just like butter with the hyaluronidase. And thankfully, I've not had to come across this before, but it's something that I do recommend that if you haven't seen it in real life, it's definitely something to experience. So just finished the morning of anatomical dissection. We saw actual cadavers and we had like all of the anatomy, we had a refresh course on blindness. And I've got to say, once you know about these things, you get a lot more scared. But so far it's been really useful just to refresh information and refreshing on the anatomy as well. It's super important that if you are seeing a cosmetic physician to always make sure that they know their stuff because if they're injecting in the wrong place you could end up with some serious complications. What was interesting is that one of the doctors who was presenting said that in Korea there have been two cases where patients have had filler in their nose and then subsequently over some period of time actually ended up having a surgical rhinoplasty and they woke up from the table blind. Now it's thought that perhaps the filler that was there in their nose would have travelled to another vessel and it caused blindness. So it's really important to make sure that if you are seeing a doctor to always tell them your past medical history. And now it's time for lunch. After an intense anatomy session, we then had lunch, which I have to say is the highlight to any course, and during which I was actually interviewed by the production house team who are the event organizers for a short testimonial. Yes, yes, minor celebrity here. <laughs> I'm here today at the Anatomical Dissection Workshop, which is held by ASAPS, and this is a paramount of importance for all cosmetic doctors and practitioners out there alike to come together and learn the new trends in cosmetics, learning how to deal with complications that may arise on the table.
One of the trends this year in the cosmetic industry is looking at the aging face and how to assess it fully. Now, traditionally, we tend to look at the face in a two-dimensional aspect, so looking at the upper, the middle, and the lower third. However, now we're shifting off more to looking at a three-dimensional face, so looking at different circles of the face. And this goes from the peripheral, the paramedian, and the median circle of the face. And by doing this, it allows us to restore the overall facial shape. Now let's look at those circles in a bit more detail. The peripheral circle looks at the temples, the cheekbones, the jawline, and the chin. The paramedian circle looks at our mid-face volume. Now these can be areas that we lose as we get older because our volume is lost and also because of gravitational descent. Our median circle looks at the nasolabial folds, the lip contour, and also the oral commissures as well as the marionette lines. And by allowing us to have this holistic view of the face, it allows us to restore the face and the volumization. Interestingly, there are also differences between genders. For example, men tend not to have a peripheral circle. They tend to have more of a strong paramedian circle. And luckily for you guys out there, that paramedian circle gets stronger with age, and so you become a lot more attractive as you get older. Just think of George Clooney. But unlucky for us girls, we tend to be stronger in our peripheral circle. And unfortunately with time, this tends to get a lot weaker. And we become more cuboid in nature. And unfortunately, our attraction levels decrease. But that's what fillers are for, hey? One of the other interesting lectures that was delivered by a cosmetic doctor over in the UK was the use of fillers in the tear trough area. Now, this is an area where a lot of patients will say, doc, I've got dark circles under my eyes. I need some filler in that area. However, as this lecture highlighted, sometimes dark circles doesn't always mean a need for fillers. For example, it may be due to pigmentation. That means that the color of the skin may be changed. Interesting as well, if you have thin skin in that area, we actually have some muscle underneath our tear trough and the muscle contains something called myoglobin, which is quite dark in color. So if you've got quite thin skin, then the muscle underneath actually comes out and it looks a lot darker. So sometimes tear trough fillers won't actually be useful in that situation. And as we know, tear trough fillers, well, sometimes you can get some reactional swelling. So that means that if you have some fillers inside the tear trough area, because the filler likes to absorb water, they actually look a lot more swollen and puffy. And so instead of fixing a tear trough filler, you've actually given yourself some baggy swollen eye bags, which is not ideal at all. So the main takeaway point from this is that if you are considering having tear trough fillers, make sure that you go to a fully trained cosmetic practitioner because you may not have a true tear trough deformity, and in which case you may benefit from some cheek filler instead. And of course, let's face it, who wants some boggy, swollen eye bags? I certainly don't. Mm -mm, not me. So do I recommend this course? Well, certainly if you're in the cosmetic field, it's something that I would recommend going at least once. Reading is great and hats off to you if you are reading and you're improving your knowledge, but sometimes as practitioners, we need to see things visually. We need to be able to feel what the needle feels like going through an archery. We need to have a look and see what hyaluronidase looks like in real life so that we can apply it to real life situations. And hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, you'll never have to use hyaluronidase in an emergency situation. But if you do, you've already played with it, you know what it feels like. And bonus points, they even give you a manual as well that you can take home and you can read your anatomy in case you've forgotten something or in case you want to flip it out during your clinical practice as well. I hope you found this video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy.